uh, I'm going to uh, pull up on the screen Greg Newmark from the uh, Bay Area, who's with us. Good afternoon, Greg. Hey, I'm uh, glad to be here. We can uh, see and hear you loud and clear here in Omaha. You know, this conference, Greg, is uh, really focused on the accomplishments of the last decade, uh, as well as what might be coming down the road before the year 2020. So what's your general take on it? Well, right now things are happening that haven't happened ever before in our history. The internet allows anyone to become part of the media, to become part of the conversation. And more and more ordinary people are starting to do that and to change big conversations, whether uh, politics or whatever. That's never happened before. It's uh, gotten off to an okay start in politics and other areas. And as people, ordinary people, uh, exercise uh, more of their power in media, that's going to translate into more power politically. Things are happening already, and by 2020, I think the whole media and political landscape will have changed. Craig, Craig uh, do these translate, or how do they translate into some of the issues that you're interested in, uh, namely government and advances in, in public access to information, uh, veterans' issues? Um, what difference does it make? Well, there's a whole bunch of areas. Uh, the one of those that I'm spending the most time personally, which you're mentioning, has to do with support for veterans. The deal there is that more and more vets are communicating with Veterans Affairs to get the kind of help they need, and there's more to come, particularly for wounded or aging veterans at home who may want to uh, get attention paid to their health uh, through the net, and I'm involved with the vendor competition along those lines. But also, when it comes to governance, people are, are getting together to support vets by helping them get better educational and medical benefits. Uh, I'm part of the group Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America. I'm only on the board there, but the group as a whole is helping, uh, you know, get like improvements to the new GI Bill, you know, which is pretty good for vets. Um, IAVA, and it's IAVA.org, like V for Veterans. Uh, they're also doing things like setting up social media for vets private to veterans, that kind of thing. Beyond that, people are using the net to get the word out. Yesterday, I blogged that I'm supporting two different big fundraisers for vets in New York. That's on my blog at the top, cnewmark.com. There's a lot of other areas. I'm involved with something called Sunlight Foundation. The deal there is Sunlight is doing things for accountability and transparency at all levels of government. The foundation is doing stuff like, oh, funding other groups which write software, which go in and reach for, for government data to tell people what's going on. The deal is with government, as with under, other, any other area, if you can show where the money's going, that tells you what's really going on. That way you can cut beyond the rhetoric and all the uh, fighting that politicians do. And when you can see where the money goes, or better yet, where it comes from, you got something real going on there. So people are getting involved in a lot of things. And you know, I'm uh, trying to help in small ways. I used to be a guy, an engineer who would do things, but now I'm more of a guy who talks about things and connects people to other people who are good at doing things. That is, good intentions aren't enough. What you want to do is support the people who know how to get stuff done. And that's what I spend a lot of my time doing. As someone who uh, came out of the news media background originally, and, and we look to uh, media to, to kind of be a watchdog for uh, government, do you see this era then as one in which it's, it's ordinary citizens really being the watchdog? Well, it's a mix of things. Right now, traditional media does less of the uh, governmental watchdog function than it used to. Ordinary citizens, um, are trying to do more of it, but it's still only a fraction of that which is needed. The idea is that uh, it's, a, it's incumbent, I think, on some of the new public service kinds of media to do more of this. There's ProPublica, 
which does a really good job of philanthropy funded taking a look at what's going on in government for example i think that they need to take a good look at why some of the regulatory agencies weren't paying attention so i do think in this decade we're going to see a lot more citizens paying attention to what goes on in government and i think we're going to see the rise of public service media like npr propublica the bay citizen and others we're going to see a new well let's say new kinds of news organizations and some old getting together to look at what's going on in government and that can change things but it does require citizen participation in ways that hasn't happened before is there a role on the tech side of this to create uh, interfaces, for example, that make it easier for people to weed through government documents and data and make sense out of it? Um, I think we're going to see new, new tools. We're going to need new tools for ordinary people, including myself, to do this kind of thing. But the hard part is figuring out what needs to be done and getting people to actually do it. I mean, like in my normal mode. Not am I a nerd, I'm, I'm a nerd, but I'm also a couch potato, and I would rather watch TV or read than get involved in some of these governmental activities. And that's true of many people. Um, what I need are tools which are easy enough to use to actually get into the governmental stuff. And then as a uh, country, we need a lot more people to be motivated to take a look at this stuff and take an active role. The hard part beyond that will get be to get accurate information. Because right now in politics, there's more and more disinformation going around and cutting through all the rhetoric and uh, deliberate misinformation. That's really hard. And you mentioned veterans issues. What, what going forward are, are the big ones there? Um, the big issues for veterans, I only understand a number of them. One area is to make medical claims processing easier. I mean, all of us, when it comes to filling out medical claim forms, military or civilian or whatever, claim forms are sometimes hard to fill out because they're often done poorly, the processing isn't done well, and we're never get, given good reasons in writing as to whether or not there's, what the problem is when something happens. When it comes to military medical claims, the problem is just plain worse. And, uh, <laughs> and right now, there's two things going on there. One is that Veterans Affairs is working on better technology. And Jeremy, you're standing right in front of a guy behind you who wants to see, and he can't. OK. My video team is good enough to tell that. OK. So vets right now need better claims processing systems to work on. And part of that will be some new software which is coming out, I think, relating to uh, Agent Orange claims. But that's the future. Beyond that, vets right now need a lot of help from other vets in terms of filling out claim forms, but getting other kinds of help too. For example, for a vet to get help with post-traumatic stress disorder is really hard. And if it's progressed really badly and they're uh, finding it hard to keep going on, they need uh, someone to talk to, a person to talk to about that. And the VA is working on that. But also, there's other groups involved, like the disabled, disabled American veterans. They're trying to get help to vets. And again, the, the simple stuff, like how do you fill out the forms better? How do you get any kind of help better? The deal is, a lot of people in Veterans Affairs and ordinary citizens across the country want to help vets better. And the problem is connecting vets to those sources of help. What I'm trying to do is find the groups who are already doing a good job of this, and then uh, <laughs> connect them together to each other so that they can form a, uh, a, better, a better grouping. What I'd like to see is kind of one-stop shopping for vets. Or if you hear about 311 programs in big cities, I'd like to get through one one for vets. That is, if you need help, you want to be able to go to a site or maybe call someone who will know how to get you the help that's needed. In terms of the big issue of this conference, looking back, looking ahead, what's your best guess about the, uh, the year 2020, what it's going to look like? 
uh, what would be surprised um, by? I think ordinary people are going to work together in groups and so on, and power, actual political ability to get stuff done, is going to flow uh, from, let's say, organizations with uh, nominal power and money, it's going to flow from the big, big guys to groups of ordinary citizens. The problem there, this, and the solution implicit in that is, how do you know when you're a group, how do you know when you're being fed disinformation by some uh, shadowy secret group uh, and who are trying to deceive you. Like right now, there are a lot of citizen groups around who have been fed misinformation, who are making things worse, not better. The problem is that there's groups in Washington which have lots and lots of money, which are currently uh, disinforming uh, real citizens groups, and that's not good. It's deceptive and worse. If you ever want to do research on that, Take a look at a bunch of investigative reporters out of uh, Madison, Wisconsin, called the Center for Media and Democracy, which is probably doing the best investigative work on this stuff. Uh, they have two sites, prwatch.org and sourcewatch.org. Their job is to find out and to uh, expose groups which are puffing, pumping disinformation into the public domain. A decade ago, we didn't have Facebook and Facebook groups. Two decades ago, people weren't on the web. Um, you know, just in a general free expression sense, doesn't this technology still offer sort of a revolutionary potential to empower people? I think so. People are using this technology in unexpected ways. No one would have ever predicted Facebook or anything like that. And in 10 years, other stuff will come up that I know I uh, shouldn't even try to predict because I, you know, I'm really bad at predicting. Seriously, I thought we'd have jetpacks and lunar colonies by now. And actually, I'm not joking. Um, so we don't know what's going to happen. No one's predicting much of this uh, accurately at all. The trick is, if you want to take part in what's happening, everyone gets a chance to play right now. Right now, the net, more or less, is a level playing field. All of us have the chance to say what matters to us, and all of us have the chance to work together in groups to influence people. This means learning how social media works, learning things about tipping points, about the use of ideas whose time may have come. It means getting together to get stuff done. And for that matter, what I'm trying to do is locate people and groups who are doing really good things and then what I do is to try to bear witness for those folks. And I'm trying to do that using social media, uh, not only Facebook, but I'm trying to, to look at other tools. Because, you know, uh, doing Craigslist right now for a brief moment in time, maybe people will listen to what I have to say. And during that brief moment, what I'm going to do is point people to the good work that other people are doing. I'm doing that on Facebook and Twitter. I'm trying to do it with uh, blogging and so on. And the deal is, again, there are a lot of people in our country who are doing really good things, who have a lot to say. And I figure if I bear witness for them, that's a good use of uh, time. That is, the only purpose of any influence or whatever I might have is to give it away to other people and to see what happens. One last question. Uh Government regulation, uh, the, the desire on the part of, of lawmakers to uh, protect the public from one thing or another, is that a big risk going forward that, that you know, the extent the internet is empowering people, there's at least some pushback? Okay, yeah. Right now, uh, sometimes people in government are tempted to uh, talk about regulation, and they may mean well, but it may actually do more, uh, do more damage than it, uh, it does good. The idea is that the uh, Berkman Center at Harvard did a study uh, about protecting people, and it turns out that you know, they said that any regulation that the government would, would do would uh, possibly make things worse. Sometimes education is the key. I know in my experience, telling people about uh, scammers and other kind of uh, bad guys out there does a lot more good than uh, trying to put into effect new regulations or law. People are generally smart, and if you give them good information, they'll act on it and uh, pass it on to other people.
Again, people are smart and trustworthy. We know that there's bad guys out there, but people have good instincts. They just sometimes need a little help in terms of what's on the net. For example, a fair amount of my Craigslist customer service work consists of helping people understand when they're being hit by a phishing scam. Yeah. So the deal is that sometimes while you may need some regulation or something like that, you can also rely on the notion that people are smart and trustworthy, and sometimes if you try to help too much, you can actually wind up doing some damage. Tangentially, I'll mention again, my uh, primary job is customer service at Craigslist. I've been doing it for well over 15 years. I plan to be doing customer service in some significant way only as long as I live. And uh, beyond that, though, I'm spending a great deal of time now doing my own twist of public service. A lot of that's talking to people in rank and file in government, and they know often what's going on and how to do it better, and they just need management support for that. And I'll be in Washington on Tuesday talking to a lot of people, spreading that message, and asking how can I approach their bosses to let the rank and file, the grassroots, do a better job. That applies also to companies. Any company, say, of greater than 150 people, the rank and file knows what's going on better than the boss, and we need to do something about that. Frankly, it applies to countries as well. Ordinary citizens often have a better idea of what's going on than people in government. That's just human behavior there. It's hard for people at the bottom of any hierarchy to get good information to people at the top. Craig, we're out of time, but it's been a pleasure talking with you by uh, iChat. And I uh, hope in the year 2020, when we get back together to look at our predictions, we hope to get you out here. So uh, uh, we'd love to have you in Omaha sometime. Uh, I appreciate it. I, I just hope the video format works uh, well. People need to lead me, let me know about it, because it's hard to read people. <laughs> and I apologize for not being funny at all. That's the hardest part when doing video. On the other hand, the girlfriend reminds me that I'm not as funny as I think I am. <laughs> well, that was something. <laughs> Thanks, folks. Thanks, Greg.